you hopefully want a better brain and you hopefully want to take steps to improve your brain health today and for the rest of your life. One of the most important variables as it relates to how our brains work, whether they are healthy or unhealthy, is what we put into our bodies. And within this conversation, one of the key variables is the quality of the food that we eat. Now, I understand that if you go online and Google best brain healthy diet, you might get a wide variety of outputs. But that's why in this video, we're going to explore some of the specific aspects of what makes a diet or specific food something that may or may not be good for the brain. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter, and let's get started. So for background, when you think about your brain, it is physically made up of cells. About 50% of those cells are neurons and about 50% of those cells are called glial cells. These cells are built out of the foods that we eat. And one of the very basic ways in which people describe something that may be a good food for the brain is does it get incorporated into or change the health of our brain cells? Now, that is one way to look at this. That's a very nuanced biochemical kind of way of talking about the health of brain cells, the health of mitochondria within our brain cells, the health of the membranes of our brain cells. But I want to try to make this as relevant as possible for everyone watching or listening to this content. And to this end, as much as you hear all the hype about a specific nutrient for brain health, I think there are three key things to look at as it relates to does a dietary food or a diet in general relate to better brain health? So what does that look like as it relates to a top trait of a brain healthy food? What is something that you can take to the bank and ask, is this something that makes this food brain healthy? The first point I would bring up is that foods that tend to be good for our overall health and that may be good for our brains tend to be rich in a diversity of plant nutrients. Now, you may have thoughts on whether plants are good or bad for people's health. Uh, you may land somewhere more in the carnivore camp, or you may land somewhere more in the vegan camp. But what I would propose is that as we look at what happens with our food as it gets incorporated into various aspects of our body and subsequently influences our health, there's a lot more to the food that we eat than simply the macro and the micronutrients. So while it may make sense to say, well, all I need is my fats and proteins and I'm covered. The truth of the matter is there is so much extra data in our food. And one of the most consistent trends as it relates to diets that are correlated with good overall and brain health is that those diets are rich in a diversity of plant-based foods and that this diversity of plant-based foods tends to be rich in what are called polyphenols. What is a polyphenol? Why should you care? Well, poly comes from the word for many, and phenols are actually a organic chemical structure. That's technical, but the bottom line to this is polyphenols are nutrients found in plants, of which there are thousands, and these nutrients are thought to influence a number of different aspects of our health, including our immune health, our microbiome, our gene expression, and all of these things may then impact our brain function. We're also learning that polyphenols may cross the blood-brain barrier where they may have effects on our brains. The short version of a complex story is that people tend to do better when they eat a diversity of plant-based foods rich in polyphenols. So the diets that are the most strongly correlated with good brain health, like the Mediterranean and the MIND, M-I-N-D diets, are diets rich in polyphenols. In one study that was conducted back in 2019, blueberries in particular were found to have a benefit for executive function, brain function. That seems like an anomaly. That's just a specific food I'm talking about. But why are blueberries interesting? Well, they're particularly packed with polyphenols. Examples of polyphenols, resveratrol, uh, curcumin, quercetin, luteolin, hesperidin, they've got a lot of funky names. And rather than try to target any individual polyphenol, I know there's some people saying, well, I need to load up on 500 milligrams of quercetin, or whatever you might have in the uh, supplement you're looking at. I do think that the research by and large supports for most people the benefit that comes from eating these in real plant-based foods. So 
the key characteristic number one of what I perceive to be consistently associated with good brain health as it relates to a dietary strategy is eat a diet rich in plant-based foods, specifically those that are rich in polyphenols. Some great examples, colorful fruits and vegetables, coffee and tea. Chocolate actually has a lot of polyphenols, but really trying to optimize your diversity of plant-based foods. What about wine? Well, wine does have a decent shot of polyphenols in it, but it also comes with alcohol. So of the different things that you could do to boost your polyphenols, I definitely don't recommend you start drinking wine and instead look at some of these other things I've just described. Probably the most concentrated source of polyphenols in our diet is spices. Actually, looking at individual spices is interesting, but just generally herbs and spices are a great way to incorporate more polyphenols into your diet. The number two characteristic of foods that are linked to brain benefits is they tend to be rich in healthy fats and specifically omega-3 fatty acids. Now, as we look at various categories of fats, it tends to be that certain fats are considered less healthy and other fats are considered more healthy for our overall health, for our cardiovascular health, for our brain health. We have largely shifted in the way that we perceive fats as far as their health effects in the last few decades. We have moved from a position that was largely anti-fat as it related to health to one that is more appreciative of the fact that fat is a nuanced conversation. Who would have known that as you look at macronutrients, carbs, protein, and fats, that there is nuance beyond just saying you should or shouldn't eat a certain number of calories from a macronutrient? Well, that is exactly what we've learned as it relates to fat. Certain fats, for example, trans fats, we know are not good for anyone's health. They are associated with increased levels of disease and inflammation. On the other end of the spectrum, one of the most healthy fats as it relates to overall health and especially brain health seems to be the omega-3 fatty acids. These are polyunsaturated fatty acids that for most of us, we need to eat through our diet because our bodies are not capable of synthesizing higher levels of key omega-3 fats called DHA and EPA. That is why they're called essential fatty acids. Where do you get these from? Well, you can get the precursor to EPA and subsequently DHA through plant-based sources like walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds. But if you're looking at trying to get the levels of DHA and EPA that have been most strongly associated with overall health and brain health, most would recognize that you need to consume these either through a seafood-based source. Generally, we think about things like salmon as well as small fish like the salmon, uh, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herrings, or smash fish, or you can supplement with an algae-derived omega-3, and that's probably especially important for people who choose not to eat meat, aka vegans. So choosing to eat foods that are rich in omega-3 fats and considering a supplementation is probably one of the more key tenets of what we would consider a brain-healthy brain uh, diet. The third aspect of what is generally considered a brain-healthy, brain-boosting food is that these are foods that are rich in minerals and vitamins like zinc, selenium, magnesium, vitamin B that are all associated with good brain health. There is a lot to be said about individual nutrients. For example, a B12 deficiency will cause a person to experience neurologic deficits. This is especially relevant for people who are either eating a poor diet or who have a condition like pernicious anemia where they're not getting enough of that B12 and therefore are basically experiencing the intense sequelae of the lack of this B vitamin. We also know that magnesium and zinc and selenium and so many other vitamins and minerals are essential to brain health. And rather than tell a person that you need to be taking X number of milligrams or grams of a supplement per day, the bottom line to a brain healthy diet is it tends to be one that naturally consumes foods rich in vitamins and minerals. So again, we're talking whole real foods here. We're not talking about bleached white flour. If anything, we're talking about eating whole grains as opposed to the highly processed version. Similarly, as we look at plants and animal foods, we understand that there is a difference between the uh, grass-fed and pastured versions of animal products versus what you'd find in a feedlot or a in the case of a chicken, a chicken that spends its life in a tiny little cage and is not given an optimal diet. On the plant-based side, we know that plants that have more experience, more stressors, and are grown organically may have higher levels of certain vitamins and minerals. This isn't to say that you have to eat organic for everything, but it is a reason to consider 
that the quality of what you're feeding your brain is a reflection of the quality of what your food consumed. If you're a plant, that means the quality of the nutrients in the surrounding soil. If you're an animal, that means the quality of the foods, usually plant-based, that you or as the animal were consuming. There's some correlates to this that are a little bit more interesting. So for example, if it's a chicken, chickens don't necessarily eat plants in the wild as their exclusive diet. So you don't necessarily want to have an animal that's only eaten other plants as far as their maximum benefits. But I digress. The main point to this is to eat foods that are naturally high in a diversity of nutrients. And I will just clarify one point. When we think about the nutrients in food, you can consider just the macronutrients. So for example, if you were to eat a slice of bread, that bread is packed with carbohydrates. Specifically, it is packed with highly refined carbohydrates. So it is full of nutrients, but it's not full of a diversity of nutrients. And those are not really the nutrients that are associated with good brain health. To this end, when you look at the foods that are most anti-correlated with good brain health, these tend to be foods that are very high in only one specific nutrient or small group of nutrients, or have been largely stripped of the nutrients that exist in nature. So if you were to eat, for example, a, a cookie that let's just say was a chocolate cookie with white frosting inside, it is full of calories, but not necessarily a diversity of nutrients. It is full of added sugars, but not necessarily a diversity of carbohydrate, including fiber. So really what we're looking at here is a diversity of nutrients, vitamins, minerals. I did just mention fiber. I think that's another important part of this consideration, which is if you're going to eat carbohydrates, which in my opinion, you should, uh, for most people, that makes sure that those are carbohydrates that contain natural fiber, because we know that is key to the microbiome and our gut health, and we are now increasingly understanding that microbial and gut health are important to our brain health. So again, these are three major characteristics that I would look at as it relates to what makes a food a potential brain boosting, brain healthy food. They, number one, tend to be rich in polyphenols, number two, tend to be rich in omega-3 fats, and number three, tend to be generally rich in a diversity of micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, as opposed to singularly rich in something like sugars or otherwise stripped of naturally occurring nutrients. The best diets, in my opinion, and I would say based on the available research as it relates to how these things come together in a cohesive form, are going to be really the Mediterranean and MIND diets. Two diets that have been shown in research to be associated with better brain health, and that by and large are diets comprised of a diversity of plant-based foods with animal foods, specifically seafood being emphasized over more red meat, and certainly a decreased amount of consumption of ultra-processed foods, added sugars, uh, any sort of added colors and other things that have become so typical in our modern day meals. So the long story short is if you're looking for the best kind of strategies as it relates to which foods seem to correlate best with better brain health, look for foods that humans have messed with the least and try to get a diversity of foods in your diet each day. I'm Dr. Austin Promoter. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'll talk to you next time.